Good evening, my dear friends. Today, in this presentation, I am going to talk about the quest of identity in the importance of being honest by Officer Wilde. The quest for identity is a theme that is one of the major themes of the importance of being honest. Now, before we talk about the textual ramifications of this theme and how it has been treated by Oscar Wilde, I must begin the, this discussion by talking about identity and quests. See, identity has got three clear-cut yet interrelated meanings. Number one, who someone is, this is one of the possible meanings of identity. Number two, the set of features that distinguishes one from another. That is the second meaning of identity. The third meaning of identity apparently is a bit paradoxical. So far as the second one is concerned, you remember? The second one I'm repeating is a set of features that distinguishes one from another. Whereas the third meaning of this is the sense of or feeling of similarity that one feels towards another. So according to the second meaning, it is what distinguishes. And according to another, the third meaning, it is what links one with another. So this requires some bit of explanation. See, the verb form of this word identity, this noun identity is identify, to identify. To identify means how one identifies himself or herself and also what allows someone else to identify with another. So, just as identify, uh, identity distinguishes one from another, obviously it refers to a unique set of features then if somebody else possesses this unique set of features or at least some of these uni this unique set of features, then obviously there is some kind of an affinity, some kind of a similarity that is felt. This is how a Bengali person in a foreign land or a, or, a, or, a, or a, an Indian in a foreign land identifies or feels a sense of identity with another Indian or another Bengali who may not be acquainted with the former previously. Now, after discussing the possible ramifications of identity, we should also talk about quest. Quest means search. So, at least, it symbolically suggests some kind of a movement.
this is related to a sense of lack l a c k lack now what is the meaning of this word lack lack is what we don't have lack is also consequently what we desire so absence and desire are the two basic elements of this word lack if there is a quest for identity then obviously there is a perceived or practical lack of that identity now this is the first part of the discussion that i think will help us or direct us in our discussion of the text the importance of being honest now identity is determined in the social within the social space with the help of certain markers for example there is the marker of name one's name is often indicative of one's identity then there is also i was talking about the um, the uh, in one of my other presentations i was talking about the two kinds of relationship one is the consanguineal relationship based on blood size another is a final relationship a final relationship is based on choice or affinity you know um, uh, for example marriage or such other partnership so you see sometimes family heritage family name and the consequent social position gives someone identity which is why some is born someone is born into the aristocracy someone is born as a member of a particular family now when we talk about the importance of being honest the first person while reading the this particular text or when you are the audience or a member of the audience you know and you see the this play being connected the first person whose identity baffles us is obviously jack um jack warding or john warding is a country gentleman who visits london from time to time uh jack comes in he he has come to visit his friend lg Lynn, LG's servant, announces him as Mr. Ernest Warden. But in the text, he has been introduced in the cast of characters, at least, as Jack. Okay. So there is some kind of an uncertainty because Jack is. not honest apparently then we get to see the episode of the missing cigarette case j 
Jack had mislaid this. Uh, LG has found it out. And there is an enigmat enigmatic inscription. Little Sicily, with her, her fondest love, to her dear uncle Jack. Now, surprisingly, Jack, who is now introduced as Ernest, claims this theoretically. The suspicious and clever LG honors him by saying what? But that Jack's real name is not Ernest, so he should not claim this. This is when being cornered, Jack has to furnish the explanation that he is Ernest in the city and Jack in the country. Why? Because he is the guardian of a young lady. And being the guardian of a young lady, he has to strike a um, serious attitude and a high moral pose, a moral tone, which is not conducive to one's health or happiness. That is why from time to time he comes to London in search of pleasure having invented a wicked, imaginary wicked brother, that is Arnest, who lives in Albany and gets into incredible scrapes from which he has to be rescued by his caring elder brother, Jack. So he assumes this name as an identity migrant, he assumes this name in the city. Till now, this is a clear cut case of hypocrisy and double life, which was quite common in the hypocritical and prudish Victorian age. At this juncture, we may look back at the author Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, let me recall, was leading a double life himself. Apparently, he was a Victorian patriarch, a husband, a ma ma married man, and the father of two children, a heterosexual patriarch. But actually, he was living a double life because he was a homosexual in love with uh, Bossy or Alfred, Lord Alfred Douglas. I, have, I am not uh, giving a mistaken name. Yes, Douglas. Yes. So, this kind of a double life was quite common. And just after this revelation from Jack, LG also reveals his own invention of an imaginary ailing friend, Bunbury. And J LG has a name for this double life, that is Bunburyism. And he calls Jack a Bunburyist. The situation, however, is complicated when Jack finds himself in a tight spot with Gwendolyn. Jack has fallen with, in love with LG's cousin, the daughter of Lady Bracknell. And the name of that young lady is obviously Jack's beloved 
That young lady is called Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn Fairfax. Now Gwendolyn points out that Jack's assumed name of Ernest is the basic reason for Gwendolyn's fascination with him. She tells Jack point blank that when LG had told her, that is Gwendolyn, that he, that is LG, had a friend called Ernest, Then Gwendolyn had thought that she was dis destined to love this man with the name of Ernest. Peculiarly, she thinks that the name Ernest inspires an absolute confidence. Here, we are made aware of the pun, the wordplay that Oscar Wilde very skillfully presents before us, involving the earnest of the title, E-A-R-N-E-S-T, meaning serious of strong conviction and earnest, E-R-N-E-S-T, the proper name. All the while, Jake is aware of another problem. The uncertainty with his identity does not stop with the two names that he goes by. One Jack or John Warding, the other Ernest. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, this uncertainty about Jack's identity goes further because he was a foundling. He was found by Mr. Thomas Thurdew, a benevolent gentleman who had found Jack as a baby in a handbag at the Victoria Railway Station in the cloakroom of that railway station. And this kind-hearted gentleman had adopted this foundling and given him the name Jack or John. And the surname of Warding, because it's really an absurd reason, because Warding was the name of the seaside resort, the place, to which Mr. Cardew was giving, uh, going, and he had the first class tickets to this wording, this place wording. So this is why he had given Jack this name, Jack Warding or John Warding. So Jack is aware of the fact that his name does not connect him to any family. And similarly, his name does not connect him to any family heritage either. We know that Jack was quoting Gwendolyn and after the ill-fated interview that Jack had had with uh, Lady Bracknell, in which he was contentiously rejected by Lady Bracknell as a foundling, and he was advised to uh, 
form some kind of relationship with someone and produce at least one parent of either sex before the season was out. Now Jack becomes very annoyed with the name Ernest. He understands that he has to get rid of this. Here, here actually, Gwendolyn shows the rebellious nature of youth, whereby she wants to ignore this very serious matter of identity and family connection and also wants to continue on this love affair that they are having. Jack gives her the address and Gwendolyn promises to stay in contact. Here the first act ends. See, in the first act, Jack was playing Ernest. So, Jack and Ernest could only appear one at a time. We are reminded of the very popular Hindi film, Golmal, starring Amol Parekar and Utpalda. You remember the 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 trick that Amol Palekar, this Ram Prasad, Dasarath Prasad Sharma has played when he was detected by Utpal Dasar. And uh, he had invented uh, wild younger brother Lucky or Lakshman Prasad, Dasarath Prasad Sharma. Okay. That's a brilliant film. You may ch watch it. Uh, coming back to the importance of being honest, when the second act begins, it is LG who is playing honest. He goes to meet and presumably to flirt with the little Sicily, that word, young word of Jack Wally. After their meeting, and after by flattery, um, LG has won over Sicily. Jack returns in deep mourning, in black attire, presumably because his wild younger brother, Ernest has died. By this time, Jack has learned from Gwendolyn that he can only hope to win Gwendolyn if his name is really Ernest and not Jack or John. So he has decided to rechristen himself as Arnett. At this juncture, Sicily drops a veritable bombshell when he tells Jack <laughs> about the existence and presence of Arnett under the roof. And Jack is further flabbergasted when he meets his own friend LG impersonating Ernest. It is really ironic that Jack cannot expose LG because he himself run, has to run the risk of being exposed. But once they are alone, he orders LG to go away. LG refuses and somehow wriggles out of this tight spot. 
However, the situation is further complicated with the arrival of Gwendolen. These two girls begin to quarrel when they realize that they are in love with someone with the name of Arnest. Ultimately, it so turns out that they are neither of them really in love with any any man really called Ernest because Cecily has fallen in love with LG as Ernest and Gwendolyn has fallen in love with Jack as Ernest. A la Jack. LG also finds out that the only way he can hope to win Sicily is if his name is Ernest. So he also decides to recuse himself as Ernest. He has a peculiar turn comes to this tale, you know, a twist. With the arrival of Lady Bracknell and the fortunate arrival of Miss Prism, ultimately it is revealed that Jack is the lost child, um, the lost elder brother of LG, and as such, the lost nephew of. Lady Bracknell. So, at least Jack is not a loafer. Jack is not an interloper. Jack is not a poor man with no family background. That he is from the aristocratic background and that he is the elder brother of LG is proved beyond doubt when Jack produces the handbag and Miss Prism recognizes it, identifies it. Okay. And ultimately it also turns out that Jack's real name was Ernest because you are the eldest son of their father whose Christian name was Ernest John. So in a way, Jack, it turns out that Jack has always unwittingly told the truth that he was honest. But this quest, of ident quest for identity is not something peculiar to Jack. Others also are in search of different identity, a parallel life. In case of LG, we have also already discussed how he has invented Manberry, who gives him the pretense of visiting the countryside in such a pleasure, escaping from the dull monotony of London life. Now, Gwendolyn and Sicily also are very imaginative. And in the case of Sicily especially, she has invented a, a full-fledged love affair between the non-existent Ernest and herself with a full set of love letters, dates, and records of happenings on particular dates involving love affair, engagement, breakup, reconciliation, and, and so on and so forth. Miss Prism, having lost a baby, in her capacity as um, 
Nas has lived in hiding under the roof of the person whom he, she had lost in a moment of mental abstraction. So, we can very easily understand that it is a quest for identity that gives to this play its overarching theme. And it, in, in some ways, links the characters with their creator, Oscar Wilde. Through this, Wilde takes a dig at the pseudo-serious, hypocritical attitude of the Victorian era, and also satirizes the institutions of marriage and the facade of a respectable public image. In the profundis, why not say that every book is a fulfillment of a prophecy because it means the ultimate transformation of an idea into an image. In this play, the quest for identity that the main character Jack undertakes leads to a happy ending and in this way it gives to the play the major thematic unity. I hope this discussion will help you in understanding the quest for identity as the major theme of the importance of being honest. Thank you for listening.